Just make sure you don't go near them with the dogs. 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 Okay, that person is too rough. You gotta stop that. That's better. You know, you're like a little chihuahua. You just, you just, you just go. Hey. All right, that's right, that's it, young man. We're getting you neutered. Come on, let's, let's go. Let's go to the power. Hark the herald angels sing. George and Kath gonna do the big thing. Well, that was the genuinely worst way to kick this off. It was, actually. Let's never do this again. Hiya, folks. BC here, along with Mr. Josh. Hello. And... I know I joked a bit about getting to a thousand in the 500 sub speed paint, but... Shut my mouth, we've done it! 1,000 subs in about a year and a half. Might not be much to others out there with wider communities or bigger fan bases. But to me, it's amazing. Thank you all so much for sticking around and leaving your wonderful, supportive comments. I thought it would be nice for Mr. Josh and I to sit down and indulge you all with this little Q&A. We gave you guys a month to send everything in and you got right to work. So without further ado, let's get we started. First up, the FAQs. What you fellas all really wanted to know. Now a fair few of you have asked more or less the same question, so if we skip out your qu particular question, sorry, it's already been answered. 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 <laughs> it's already been answered. Oh. Oh. The Green, the Green Five, two thousand and three asks. Hi. Hi. <laughs> he says. Hi, first of all, congratulations on a thousand subs. You truly deserve it. Love your series. Aw, thank you so much. Anyway, here's the questions. Question one. Why did you pick Newton Abbott in particular for your series? Because I lived there at the time. That's essentially it. <laughs> I, li I lived there. I found out it had a really big station complete with like four platforms, Jeremy. That's insane. No one's going to get that joke. Except me and a couple of other people, but hey. And, like, it had its own carriage works. It had its own locomotive depot, kind of. Its own workshops. Yeah. there's a, It was legitimately called the Swindon of the West, apparently. Number two. Who is your favourite character in NES and who is your favourite to write for? I can't say I have a favourite character in NES. They're like... You don't pick a favourite of your children? They're all my children, I love them very much. You must choose. No, I won't choose! Do it. I refuse to choose. Do it. Who is my favourite to write for? Ooh. Uh... Well. Uh... Probably either Lizzie, Louise, or... Uh... Maybe someone else will pop up in the future. At the moment, let's just say Lizzie to be safe. And question three, what is your favourite locomotive? Um, we'll start with my one. Yeah, your one. Mine is the um, Swedish Railway B-Class 460. Mostly because when I was probably around five... When he was a little George. Yeah, when I was a tiny little, tiny, tiny little George. He was fetus tall. <laughs> That's disgusting! <laughs> Oi, I'm the only one who's allowed to make the crap jokes, not you. Oh. Yeah, it's my job. It's my job. Hey. Anyway, when I was but a little one, my na my nan's house used to be um directly by Peter Bernie Valley Railway Station. So, whenever my mother used to bring us round to my nan's, we'd always see the Sweetie Bee that would run round the train on its way back to Peterborough. Sweet. Or Big Blue, as my granddad used to call her. And since then, I've had a real personal attachment to that engine. Everyone who knows me thinks that Tinkerbell is my all-time favourite steam engine, but... No, it's Sweetie B. It's just a real bastard to draw. Um... Hmm... Hmm... You see, ladies and gentlemen, Caitlin is what we call in the fandom as a fucking normie. <laughs> 
<laughs> she, she does not know her classes of steam locomotives. <laughs> Shut up, I do. Um, let's say it's 5322, because reasons. Well, it is. But, I've well, seen... I've seen 5322 the most, I've worked on 5322 the most, though I also like Shannon. Mm -hmm. And I also like the kitchen boy. He, ref she's referring to um, that little low 4 row kitchen is, is tank. He, is he 1 6? <laughs> Look, there's a fucking picture of it. Oh, he's, he's nice. Though I also like Ashley from the. Um, South Devon Railway. Yeah, from the South Devon Railway. And uh, I also like Tiny. Tiny mm. is very good. <laughs> anyway, Peanut Butter Free asks, How come in your first NAS story, Louise was a Great Western Prairie, but ever since she's been a GWR 1400? So, the short version? Retcom. The long version, honey? Well... We had more, well, at the first starting of writing NAS, we had originally intended for Louise to be a Great Western Prairie, but as time went on, as, well, we sort of dropped off of NAS and jumped back onto NAS, we started looking at the characters as they were, and I had the idea in my head that having a Great Western Prairie was a bit boring, truth be told, and I thought, do you know what? It'd be far more funnier to have the pampered personality of a Top Link Express engine compacted into a tiny little 1400. And thus Louise was born. It's like a terrier yapping at Great Danes because the terrier thinks it's actually bigger than the Great Danes. Yet the Great Dane could probably smash its head into the ground with one swipe. It's that kind of comedy effect thing. We can't look back on it. She's actually glad that um, Louise was a 1400 rather than a Great Western Prairie, because that would have made her a much more boring of a character. Yeah, it actually meant that Louise would have been able to back up any threat she made. Whereas here, she can't. And it's wonderfully comedic. GH22 asks, How long have you been interested in railways? Uh, actively interested? These past two or three years. Not really all that long at all, but on and off, kind of since I started writing MAS, all the way back in whenever it was. <laughs> 2012, yeah. Oh shoot, that long ago, huh? Yes. Well then. So, um, yeah, that's for me anyway. Mm -hmm. And for me, I've been, in, I've been in love with railways ever since my tiny days of Thomas. I don't think I can really alliterate any any further than that. If you didn't get into railways because of Thomas, where did you come from? <laughs> A railway family, obviously. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Okay, what inspired you to write NAS? What inspired me to write NAS? I was in the middle of my GCSEs. I was having a pretty... Well, in my gaudy teenage mind, a bad time at home. So I wanted to do something for myself, for fun. I wanted a means of escape. And I'd always wanted my own series on YouTube, so... NAS just happened to come to be. I wrote Lizzie and the Hackney Death Engine straight off the bat. Didn't even think about it, just poof! Oh yeah, that's a thing that sort of, um, sprung to mind. Was that? Lizzie never started life as a... As a great western mogul. No, we'll get we'll get to that if we get to that, but... No, I think it's best we get to it now, because I don't think the subject will ever come across her again. Okay, so Lizzie used to be a Midland compound, guys. Well, I kind of thought she was going to be a Midland compound, but then George was like, no, that's boring, make her a 4300. No, we didn't even make her a 4300, can you jump to the gun, bitch? <laughs> what happened? <laughs> I told you he's better at storytelling than I am. No, what happened was, it was originally going to be a... Lizzie was going to be a Midland Compound, be a little bit like Louise in some regards, but that was back in the days when I wrote the god-awful series of... that didn't even get off the grounds of Engines of Peterborough. <laughs> Never again. But, as time went on, we took that name and made her into what we're more familiar with now, um, well, character-wise. 
But instead, she took on the form of like an Ivet 260. Okay, I don't remember her being an Ivet 260, but we'll go with it. Yeah, don't, you. Don't worry, you, guys, I have a memory like a colander, it's fine. No, she has the memory of an elephant reverse. That means I always forget. <laughs> I had to take a moment there. Exactly. Aww. Okay, do you plan on taking taking the series all the way to the end of Steam on British Railways? If you guys go to the NAS playlist I have for you guys, it, it does say it will go all the way to nationalisation at least. So, yeah. Yes, it will. And lastly, is, Tom is NAS set in the Thomas the Tank Engine universe, or set in its own universe that happens to have talking steam engines and rolled out like a Thomas story? The latter is correct, though originally it was going to be set in the Thomas universe. But after I came across a little bit of discourse within the Thomas fandom and took a great big deep introspective look at it all, I was just like, ugh, this is gross, George, let's write Thomas out of this. And he was more than happy to comply. How can someone be more than happy? Sounds like a dangerous mental condition. Yeah, I'm more than happy. How, what? You'd... We had to put Louise in the mental home. She was... More than happy. <laughs> more than happy. I, I, I pro I'm sorry if I pronounced your name wrong, but a Brazy 2 asks, Dear Butterfly Coffee, I have listened to, listened to Newton Abbott's saga from episode 1, and now consider it one of my favourite YouTube series. Aw, thank you. I was wondering, what aside from the certain blue tank engine was the inspiration for the series? Was there any particular event or person who inspired you to create the series? Many thanks. Mechanic. Oh, yeah, I see what you fucking did there. <laughs> you... You... Cucking funt. That's not very nice, honey. What, being called a funt? Anyway, um, the central inspiration, well, I've already kind of answered that, so I'll answer the next part of the question. No, there was no particular person or event who inspired me. I just did it right off the ball. British Railway Stories. Oh, shush. We'll get to that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Sodor Match Factory asks. <laughs> Matchmaker, you nummy. Oh, I misread that wrong, sorry. Yeah. To BC, out of all the stories you and George have written for New Alex Saga, which one is the one that you're most proud of? Hmm, most proud of? Yes. Hmm. There's no denying Bite the Bullet has become the mainstay of the series. Mm -hmm. But the one I'm most proud of? Yes. I'd probably either say Cash in the Cash or Truce. On what grounds? Well, Cash in the Cash, because it's technically very well done. It's one of the first, you know, real sort of good technical things about the series. A lot went into it, and it's great. Truce, because, again, writing-wise, I think it's one of the better ones I've done. I was able to include competent French in there, guys! Uh, you can, can speak French. Oui, je, je parle un petit peu de français et c'est très utile pour euh, Lizzie parce que Lizzie euh, euh, parle français aussi. Ah. <laughs> yeah, I, I quite like Cash in the Cash, especially because of the weird um, twist in it. Oh yeah. Don't say what the twist no, is no, for no, you. No, no, you no, no. Oh, oh. Uh, the Idaho Rail fan says. Hello BC, first off, major congratulations on making a thousand subs. You deserve them all and more. Aww. Oh, that's very nice, thank you. Right, questions. I have a feeling this is going to come up a number of times, but... And you will be right. <laughs> Besides the obvious, Jinty. Well, I can't deny that Jinty is kind of obvious, but there we go. What's your favourite class of steam locomotive, of whatever nationality, of course? Well, I've already said the 4300 is one of my favourites. Okay, any engines across the across the borders that you like? Mm, I kind of like 
like those um Dutch engines. They're very cute. Oh, you mean the ones from the Stoomtram Museum? The Stoomtram Museum. They're they're very cute. They're they're Skittles engines. They're very cute. And I also like the Danish F. Because of Tinker Toggles. Yes, because of Tinker Toggles, and they look very nice. They're like the perfect blend of historically beautiful and cute. You wouldn't thought of looking at Tinkerbell that she had... She looks like she's from the 1890s, but she was built in 1950. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. Dylan May asked, I have seven questions for you, BC. Let's get right to them then. Yeah. How did your idea of creating your own fantastic, amazing series, the Newton Abbott Saga, all start? I've already answered this question. Mm -hmm. You're going to have to skip back through the video to find it, okay? Which episode of the Newton Abbott Saga is your personal favourite? Ah, hmm. Personal favourite. Personal favourite. Honey, whilst I'm thinking, what's yours? Um, bite the bullet. Why bite the bullet? Because it's the first one where you've legitimately pissed yourself off. <laughs> oh dear. Um, I would probably also have to say... Ah, it's really difficult. I'll just pick one for a dumb reason because I don't think I've legitimately come across my absolute favourite yet. I'll say Homefront because the ending of it is so beautiful. <laughs> the ending of Homefront is just graceful in every regard. Question three. Are you familiar with Simon A.C. Martin's The British Railway Stories? Of course I am. It's one of the major inspirations for NAS. You can see it in the, in the description of the playlist. The funny thing is, when I was on a few Discord chats, I heard a couple of fans actually say, oh, we watch NAS until Simon Martin can start making um, the British Railway stories again. Well. You heard it from the fans, Kate, and we're a side series. We're a side series. That's... That's very f fucking d depressing. I'll take it as a compliment because it, you're directly saying my work is nearly as good as Simon Martin's, so thank you. Uh, number four, what's your favourite railway series book? Uh, my favourite railway series book is either James the Red Engine, Percy the Small Engine, obviously. What's the fucking fourth one called? Tank Engine Thomas again? Thomas the Tank Engine again. Again. I what's, think. Okay. What's yours? Uh, my favourite one is Mountain Mountain Engines because it really does open up a a completely different kind of railway to what you're actually used to. And plus, it got me into Snowden Railway. So. Uh, what is your favourite episode or episodes of Thomas the Tank Engine on the television? Favourite episodes. Um, mm. those would probably be something like Thomas gets bumped, no joke for James, uh, Percy runs away, Gordon and the Gremlins, uh, Percy, James and the Fruitful Day, Duncan gets spooked, Horrid Laurie, Toby's Discovery, Haunted Henry, uh, those are all the classic ones. Let's go for some newer, newer ones. Mm -hmm. Um, Thomas's Animal Ark. Letters to Santa, uh, One Good Turn. I have lots, okay? I, I, I have lots. Counting on Mia is also quite cute. <laughs> uh, uh, but um, I, I, I also like a lot of them, so so yeah. I don't really watch Thomas as much as I used to, so my m remembrance of all the episodes are a bit scarce. But the ones that have stuck with me are Haunted Henry, Duncan gets spooked, put upon Percy. Um, surprise? Uh, surprise for Percy? Yeah, surprise for Percy because of the chase scenes. Oh, yeah. Is it Toby in the Flood or Toby in the Dam? Like That one with Toby in the Dam? Yeah. Yeah, Toby in the Flood. I don't know why, but when, when Toby is getting carried away by that flood, that horrified me as a child. It's a really intense scene because it moves so slowly. So that just leaves more time for the tension to build higher and higher and higher. You know, is Toby going to get whooshed over the fucking waterfall? It's moving so slowly. Why is it moving so slowly? Oh dear God, Toby, no! But now I'm older, I'm just thinking, how the fuck is Toby floating right now? The same way Thomas floats in The Great Discovery. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, <laughs> God.
recording. Get out of here. <laughs> oh, no, it's too comfortable in here. Piss off. <laughs> Fuck off, Go Fuck off, Gordon. Oh, puff off, baby. Puff off, baby. Puff off. Uh... Question six. Who is your favourite character or characters in the Railway series or Thomas? So, let's shoot through this quickly. For me, my top three at least are James, Percy and Thomas when he's fucking written appropriately. Outside of that, everybody else is a good egg in my books except for Charlie, Billy and Philip. They can all kind of go choke. My favourite character was early series Gordon. Mostly because he was a big, pompous, arrogant prat, but... At the end of the day, he was he was a character that genuinely that did care for his friends when push came to shove, even if he did have a bit of a laugh at their expense. But nowadays, Gordon is literally the fandom just shoved into the corner. <laughs> like he threw a tantrum in forever and ever, and I've never been able to quite look at him the same way again. Like, why is nobody stopping this rampaging, galloping sausage? Why is nobody sitting him down, smacking him across the face and going, No! Shut up! Because Murdoch isn't there to kick his teeth in. Oh, for God's sake, we need Murdoch back. And last question. What are your top five favourite Disney movies? I do not... I, I cannot remember any Disney movies, so my... Did time. you never really grow up with Disney? I did not go to Disney World. Ah, uh, Disney World. So, for me... Uh, I can't give a top five, but I can give a five I probably remember. So, for me, that would be uh, Hercules, Oliver and Company, Bambi, The Jungle Book, and uh, there's got to be one from today I quite like. Oh yeah, Moana. Oh yeah, Moana was quite nice. Moana was nice. Moana was good. Moana is love. Moana is life. I mean, please, no. We don't want this. Am I sick? Stop it up! Richard Blue, 1963, asks. Oh, God, what does he ask? Favorite OC. Favorite OC? From, From an NAS or any fan creation. Okay, my favorite OCs are ones I've made recently, if you've been following me on Twitter. Uh, ours thus. A little green tank engine called Beanie the Bagel. After we're done with NES, she's going to be in the next light-hearted um, series that we're going to be doing. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Beanie the Bagel is my next project after NES. You heard it first here. And my other OC is, um, oh, well, it's my Christmas OC called Snowflake the Slain Engine. When Santa's reindeer have finally gotten too old to carry on with the decade-old task of delivering presents, Santa has commissioned some friends at Hunslet to build him an engine to, to take presents well, across the world. And every now and again he tends to land at a certain heritage railway just to say hello to the children. And it's certainly not because of the fact he saw the massive fucking coal pile down by the sheds. No, why, why ever would it be because of the coal pile? Okay, uh, uh, now you uh, Um, from NAS or any fan creation? Oh god. Uh, I legit can't think of any. Ugh. None of them really strike me, outside Ugh. of Beanie and Snowflake, so next one. Those are the ones I made. I know, but I love them. That's why I love them. Uh, question two. What's your favourite fan-made project? Uh, for me, that would be Tobias and the Half Pariah. And for me, it's anything done by TARDIS Project, because a lot of his stuff is just... Tard spot. TARDIS Rescue stuff is so on the button. It's just great. Uh... Next one, favourite movies and TV shows. Uh, for me, favourite serious TV show, Avatar The Last Airbender. Favourite stupid TV show, Gadget and the Gadgetinis. Uh, I'm going to go with um, Avatar. You go with Avatar? Yes. Coffee or tea? Coffee. Mean tea. Coffee. Coffee. Mean tea. Coffee. Mean tea. Coffee. I like both. Okay. Do you have a favorite video game mascot like Sonic, Mega Man, Mario? That's all I have. Congratulations on 1K subs. Your content is amazing. Fuck off, King Edward. Oh, mommy! <laughs> um, so, uh, my favorite video game mascot would probably be Kirby. Uh, Did you do a Pichu, because I used to main him a lot in Smash Brothers. <laughs> 
Even if he did hurt himself a lot through most of his attacks, I still love the little bean. <laughs> anyway. Anyway, off. Uh, Vincent Birkin. I've seen you a lot in my comments, sir. He goes, I have some questions. Do you think if Kingdom actually learned to give the younger engines a chance, would things have been different for the old son of a bitch? I know Kingdom in his ways, but I can't help but feel sorry for the old grouch. He just pushed away everyone that cared for him and died a lonely, grumpy old man. No. No. We can't, you... we can't make every bastard nice. You can't we... redeem every villain. You can't redeem every villain, and the whole point of Kingdom was to write him as horrid as a character as you physically could without him actually being able to physically harm anyone. Like in like 99% of all the fucking edgelord series is that try to be edgy. George is very bitter about that. But no, Kingdom would not have been any different. He would have still been a horrible, nasty, grumpy old man because there are people in the world like that and you just can't change them. Kane, your series is shit and no one likes it. <laughs> That's horrible. Uh, will Lizzie meet any Americans, such as the S-160s and the S-100s? Well, that's another story. Yeah. Number three, do you support the bill to enforce... Force ducks to wear pants. There are two ways of doing things, the oh. right western way or the wrong way. There are two ways of wearing trousers, the great western way or the wrong way. I'm Great Western and... Oh dear, I appear to have written my pants so you've not wearing in the Great Western way, shed. <laughs> Where's all wearing my pants? I bought them in tumble dryer again. Oh, I need them that night, oh dear. Oh, shy. <laughs> <laughs> when I've stopped coughing, we'll move on. Uh... Magnet Bar OC 2002 asks, Will the panniers be more fleshed out or are they simply just background characters? Well, I think it's best I answer this one. Mm -hmm. The Great Western Pannier Tank was probably the most, probably the most numerously built 060 tank engine in the UK full stop, with probably roughly more or less 800 800 examples built over the years, and that's not even not even excluding the 5700s. So. The common shunter stereotype has to stem from somewhere. I'm afraid the pannier, there are too many panniers to really keep focus on. They're a bit like the Black Fives, they just sort of fade away into the background. Yeah, I mean definitely I go with that. There's a reason why every sort of major cartoon show should have like a main cast, a supporting cast, background characters and bit roles. And we already have a main cast, we already have a supporting cast. We don't need to flesh out the panniers. Number three. Was Mr. Turner's punishment for Louise to just leave her out in an air raid, or does he still have more planned for her? Oh yes, Mr. Turner is certainly a secret Nazi spy that arranged for a German air raid to fall down on Newton Abbott. <coughs> he, he telephoned them specifically and said, Oi, there's a 1400 in that yard. I want you to specifically miss that one just to teach her a f***ing lesson. Yeah, of course, uh, we will get a hold of my Jorah and make it so uh, I during. We will get a hold of him too. Um, the actual answer is no. Having an air raid happen whilst Louise was being left out there was completely coincidental. Mr. Turner was, you know, he had no part of that. That was beyond his control. You don't schedule an air raid, is it? I mean, you kind of do, but that's sort of like on the enemy's side rather than our side. Yeah. Uh, ThomasFan21 asks, Hello BC, I hope you and George are having a good day so far. We are having a very splendid day, thank you. Yeah, thank you. Uh, the questions, will there be an austerity locomotive in the series, like an S100 or something else? Well, while this is for another story, but if you look at the history books, it was adamantly clear that S100s never really ran on the western region. The most they did ever work was in, in Southampton, so unless we delve into a story where one of the cast goes down down south, I highly doubt we'll ever see an S100 character. Mm, what he said. Question two. What made you choose a Jinty for being Caitlyn's basis? Uh, I felt like it. That's really all there is to it. And number three, what are your thoughts on the LNER J50s? 
Thomas should have been a freaking J50, and I will fight anyone who disagrees. Oh, another question from Magnet Bar C 2002. We forgot. I hope this ain't too much of a personal question, but how did you and Mr. Judge meet? That's, That's for another, another story. story. Fuck, that was cliche. Mm. <gasps> it's Zephyr! Hi, Zephyr! How you doing, buddy? Oh, my God! Gordon! Oh, sorry, I farted. Gordon, you <laughs> bastard. Oh, well. Right. Our good buddy, Zephyr4501, asks... Regarding the character of Kingdom, did you always see him as an older Panya design? Well... Kinda? Yeah... We did imagine him as a very old Panya, but we didn't really know what sort of classification he was until... until I started editing the Christmas special in them. Um, oh yeah, Division Crossed. For some reason I always mix those two up. That's right. Yeah, it wasn't until Division Crossed did we actually fully determine what his class was. Now for all the kiddies out there, Joey, what class is Kingdom? Kingdom is a Great Western Great Western Buffalo tank. You heard it first here, kiddies. Which a lot of the engines date back to the time when um when Brunel's broad gauge was a muck of the muck of the Western region. And fun fact, when a when a fair few of the broad gauge engines went for scrap, a lot of them didn't actually get scrapped, they just got converted into um converted to standard gauge. Mm. As a result, a lot the Great Western Railway had a massive abundance of outside framed and um, outside framed locomotives. And Kingdom, the engine we've based Kingdom on, dates all the way back to Broad Gauge era. Yeah. If I remember correctly, Broad Gauge was taken away from Newton Abbott in about eighteen ninety I think the I think the general demise of Broad Gauge on the GWR was like eighteen ninety two or something. Alright. So, somewhere around the 1890s, I think. I'm not exactly sure of the dates. But yeah. Are there any scrapped characters you had originally planned to introduce early on? Well, we don't have scrapped characters, but we do have scrapped stories. One of them I think I can talk about very readily, but the other one I can't because spoilers! Mm -hmm. So, one of the scrapped stories we had essentially focused on uh, the Battle of Britain and <clears throat> how the engines would react to all the fighting and the buzzing of the planes and things like that. But at the end of the day, that was just not something you could feasibly write about. It was too small an event of an event to really stretch out into a story. So, it got incorporated into Bombshell. Hmm. And plus, when you've written the, written the Air Raid episode, it, it tends to get a bit boring when you've written, written another Air Raid, no, another, no, another, it's, it starts to lose its, lose its effect and feel, if you get my meaning. Yeah, you've got to be able to do something interesting with it every single time, otherwise you're just going to have your audience suffering from fatigue. You're going to get tired of the same thing over and over again. Right. Locomotive Artist asks, Do you still watch the newer Thomas episodes, and what are your thoughts? Well, I watch... Yeah, I do watch the um, newer Thomas episodes, but and... Honestly, a fair few... A fair dozen of them have legitimately made me laugh. Like when, when um, Connor decides to break his leg when break his leg at speed, and when you he mean break his leg, he broke it. He sheared his connecting rod. Oh yeah, base is that 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 that's the engine equivalent of breaking a leg apparently. Probably, even that or tearing a hamstring, which is fucking painful. It becomes bacon strands. <laughs> the one joke there when. When Connor sat in the station, and then he got St Stephen pulling alongside, he's like, "Come on, Connor, why didn't you race me?" And then there's all this great big um, I of the Tiger build-up music, and then in a great whoosh of steam, then you just look and Stephen's just taking off at iceberg pace. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, Big World Big Adventures hits more often than it misses. You guys have got to remember that 
Big World Big Adventures is not aimed at us older fans. It's aimed at children today. You've got to bear in mind the demographic it's aiming for. And for the demographic, I think it's a hell of a load of fun. You have bright, vibrant colours, engaging characters, good fantasy sequences to capture the little kiddies' attention. And I just legitimately like it. As an older fan, I love the direction it's taking. Like George just said. Even though Mattel is on a downward spiral. <laughs> well, that's another thing entirely. Um, downward spiral. Downward spiral. But um, yeah, I love the directions that uh, Thomas is taking today. Long overdue. And I can't wait to see what the next season of Big World Big Adventures is going to bring. Uh, the only problem I do have with it is the pacing. Mm. It's far too quick. It, it, you, you sit down to watch an episode, you yawn, and then you're like... Wait, it's over already? Where the fuck's it gone? Where's the rest of it? So, outside of its pacing, which always needs a little bit of work, Big World Big Adventures is lovely, and everybody who doesn't like Big World Big Adventures doesn't know what fun is. Um. What gave you, gave you the idea to name your account Butterfly Coffee? I just wanted something uh, that could caught a wider audience. Something that didn't, you know, limit me down to a specific fandom. Percy Lover 06. Yeah, that's very true. Um, but also, I created that account when I, account when I was 14. I'd grown up a lot since then, so I felt a name change was in order. Titanic Master 475 asks, If you both had a day to choose to ride with the crew in any of the operating steam locomotives in the UK, what would you choose and why? Well, a couple of years, give or take, I probably will get the chance to ride in the steam engine I wanted. Hmm. Just think, Tinkerbell is coming to town. Tinkerbell is coming to town. Um... So, as for me, um... 5322. She's non-operational, though. She... I can... She could be, but at the minute she's not. So... Uh... I... I mean, to be fair, I'd sort of use them to think about in a future pretense. Ah. So, I don't know if it's operational right now, but either... 4277... 1420 when she comes back to service or 5322 if she ever does go back to service and question two if you were both going to the USA where would you go and why um, I hear the west coast is pretty good San Francisco Seattle LA just drive down the west coast that sounds good my bro's also been to um Denver, Colorado, and he says it's pretty swell. Uh, my dad went to America a very long time ago. He's very swell. He says that's very swell. Uh, we've got a friend who... We've got a friend in the US. Hi. You know who you are. Hello, buddy. He's from Texas and makes very fantastic 3D models. Let's go and chuck him out! Um, um, and you say you're, one of your brothers has been to the state of New York? Yeah, he's been to New York and then he went up to New England to do camps. Ah, I see. So, who knows? And finally, Thomas Pokemon 67 asks... Um, what is your favourite fusion in Steven Universe? Neither George or I really watch Steven Universe anymore for... reasons. Ugh. But when we weren't as critically discerning, um, my favourite fusion would have had to have been Garnet. She was the only one who had her ship together and she was a relatively enjoyable character. Ruby and Sapphire were cute, so there. And finally, an anonymous from Tumblr asks... How far along into the future have you planned ahead for future stories, as in how long after 1942 is thought out for the Newton Abbott engines and their stories? I've already kind of answered this, but since you've given me a date, I can be a little more specific with this. Newton Abbott Saga has 20 stories lined up. So that's 20 outlines for stories planned. 
and they will go up all the way up sorry to I think 1953 roughly yeah roughly 1953 that's as far that's as far as we've planned ahead so far thus far yep We've got an entire backlog of things to do before we plan any further ahead, so... Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, thank you for coming to my TED Talk. Um... Your TED Talk? <laughs> you don't know what TED Talk is? No. Oh, sorry. Um... But yeah. I don't know if you're expecting some sort of closing outro speech, because we didn't think of one, well, Caitlin didn't think of one, did you? At least say thank you for everyone, to everyone for subscribing to you. Yeah, I, I did. I said that at the beginning, but well, I'll say it again because it's always a good thing to say. Thank you, everyone, so much for subscribing and liking what George and I do and being your amazing, useful selves. I wonder. <laughs> um, I only wish that Mr. Judge and I could regularly provide you with more content, but we've both had quite a lot on our plates. Hopefully in the new year that will clear itself up a bit more and we can start providing more content. That's the only way I wish, you know, we'd be, that's the only thing I really wish would be different. I don't know, but anyway. Uh, this has been a very big thing. This has been a big thing for us to say thank you to you for sticking around with us and liking what we do and being wonderful and yeah. And yeah. And yeah. <laughs> and expect Beanie the Bagnall in the near future. We don't know. We don't have a release date for Beanie the Bagnall, so please don't ask for one. Uh, we have no idea how we're going to do Beanie the Bagnall. Please don't ask how and please don't suggest anything how because we are all in the process of figuring that out. But the poll said it wanted to be model model series. Oh shoot, yeah, you can find the poll on Twitter, guys. Um, I suppose also, very quickly, you can find myself on uh, Twitter and Tumblr. Uh, the links will be on the screen now. Well, it uh, depends on how long Tumblr lasts, but you know. Well, Tumblr's already kind of gone down the plug hole, but don't worry. When when Pillow Fort goes live, I'm going there. Um, you can also find Mr. Judge on DeviantArt and Twitter. Oh, speaking of DeviantArt, a lot of you will have noticed I've left. Uh, that's primarily because, as an artist, I reread through DeviantArt's Terms of Service, and not only uh, do you actually give up your copyright to the artwork the moment you post it there so you can't legally do anything about it but DeviantArt has a very sneaky clause in their TOS where any piece of art you upload to them they can use in whatever shape or form they want so they can use it to advertise their site they can use it to sell to third parties so your artwork could end up on t-shirts all without your permission and you can't do anything about it because once you put it on DeviantArt it's not your art anymore and as an artist I was quite unhappy with that so I put up a no and I've left DeviantArt for good that's why that's why I'm not on DeviantArt anymore and on that bombshell it's time to end thank you very much for joining us on this Q&A video thank you very much and good night to all of you, and Merry Christmas. Good night all, and a very, very Merry Christmas or Happy Holidays to you all. We'll see you all again in 2019. Bye! Bye! Wait, now, how do you turn this thing off? Oh, no, it's the oh, big button! Wait, how do no. I... Oh, ah!